Dr. Jones, um, Dr. Jones, a minute ago, um, you know, a while ago, we, we talked about uh, missing tooth and the havoc they can uh, bring uh, in, 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 in a mouth from headaches to neck pains to shoulder pains, never mind chewing the food not so good, which creates a whole uh, row. And teeth becoming crooked and by doing so like a fence ball, other teeth starting to, you know, in itself start to look ugly. Okay, we covered that. Now, what are the options and have there been major improvements over the last, let's say, decade or anyway, you know, uh, in order to replace a, a missing tooth? Um, there's uh, lots, of, uh, lots of names floating around and, uh, and sometimes people think that... Uh, Let's just say the implant or whatever, it totally replaces the whatever was before. Um, you know, that might, might not be so. They may be both having their function. Tell us a little bit of what's out there. Um, sure. In terms of sure. Well, most people are, are very familiar with, with uh, replacing teeth with some kind of a removable um, removable bridge that their grandparents had or they've seen people you know take in and out of their mouth and and you know that was that was fine for them but but the main problem with those kinds of, of appliances is when we eat food gets underneath of them they they become loose and they wiggle around in our mouth they actually will start to loosen other teeth and pretty soon we have to start taking out more teeth only because that particular appliance was placed in their mouth in the first place. So over the years, the improvements have been made. Um, but the, one of the, the biggest improvements of, of the last century was the invention of the dental implant. It's made out of titanium, and it actually replaces a root. So a good term would be an artificial root. And, and when an artificial root is placed inside either the upper jaw or the lower jaw, it does two things. One thing is it stabilizes bone loss. You know, Helmet, when we lose a tooth, not only does it impair the function of, of how our teeth chew and grind our food and how we nourish ourselves, but the bone that used to be in that area that used to support that root will also start to dissolve away. And if you have a dental implant put in or an artificial root, that will preserve that bone, preserve that healthy jaw bone. So basically so that it doesn't... The bone, sorry to interrupt you, the bone basically, somehow the body, if there's no root in it, it's almost like the body says, we don't need you. Almost like if you get a cast on your, on your hand uh, for a yes. couple months, in, uh, I, I don't yes. know whether you ever had that, but I did, and then you take it off and your hand is thin like a little, like a little wire. It's smaller. I, it's That's exactly right. Every bone needs compression and tension, whether it's our fingers or our legs, our arms. It, any bone that we have needs compression um, or tension in order to uh, stabilize the health of that bone. And when you take a tooth out, that particular area of the upper jaw or lower jaw no longer has that compression or tension. And so the bone starts to dissolve away. It starts to atrophy. Just it little by little, it's... Yeah. starts to dissolve away. Is that one of the reasons why, you know, people who have a fair amount of teeth missing, they start looking like a dried out caved in tomato? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, because instead of having a jaw that might be an inch or more thick, that now that jaw is maybe a quarter of an inch thick, and, and they've lost, you know, three-fourths of the amount of bone that they used to have. And so their face just all looks sunken in and, and um, their cheeks are sunken in. They're, they get wrinkles faster because everything is starting to dissolve away. And so that is one of the most important functions of a, of a dental implant is to restore that health of that bone, that jawbone in that area. But the second more important, maybe more important, uh, function of that artificial root is it now becomes a platform on which we can build a new tooth. In other words, it's the same as a, a dental crown on a tooth that most people are, know what a crown is or a cap is on a tooth. We can put a cap or a crown on top of a dental implant that completely restores the function of that that, that tooth used to have. And and now the, the patient can chew again. And they don't have a space where other teeth will move into. So now we talked earlier about the joint stability, the jaw joint, the TMJ stability. Now that can become more stable because you don't have teeth that are moving. Now we can chew our food more, more um, uh, functionally and, and, and totally right. instead of having to chew on our front teeth. Let's go a little so bit. So the dental implant is... 
Good. Good. Finish your very, sentence. Very, very helpful. Good. Uh, let's but, go a little yeah, bit. Yeah, uh, very helpful. Let, great. Let's go into the difference a little bit, um, Dr. Jones, of um, there may be pros or cons or maybe the when needed and when, when one is needed or the other one is needed. Let's take a, let's say, three or four unit bridge, which basically means you use two of the old teeth, you put a crown on it, and you hang a couple Correct. teeth in between, which makes it a bridge. Correct. Um, Absolutely. Filling the space, and I'm sure the teeth can be adjusted for your DMJ and all and that. Absolutely. Bleeding, right? Yes. Good. Yes. Now, that versus an implant, um, are there times when one is more preferable versus the other one, or, you know, does one last longer than the other one? Are there some handicaps which one brings with it versus the other one? Sure. Tell us about it. Yeah, Helmut, and it's a great question because, you know, we talked earlier about, about how do we decide what is the best treatment. You, you know, you talk, you can go to a restaurant and choose from a variety of things, but in dentistry, really, what is the best and how do we decide what that is? And it might be different, it, almost similar circumstances might be different for one person than another. But in reality, Helmut, we actually weigh all of the risks and all of the benefits for both treatments, whether it's using a, a bridge, as you mentioned, where we crown one tooth and then there's a couple of fake teeth welded to that bridge and we crown another tooth and, and, and put, span across a, a, a space with two false teeth, or whether we should put two implants. I think one of the biggest benefits of having a dental implant in place versus having a bridge, let's just say we chose to have a bridge done. And then let's say one of those teeth develops a problem three or four years down the road. We have to replace that entire four-tooth bridge. Or if that tooth needs to be removed, now we need a bigger bridge. But if we've chosen to replace those missing teeth with a dental implant or one or two dental implants, and let's say that same problem happens and we have a problem with one of the teeth, now we only have to work on that one tooth. We don't have to replace the entire bridge again. So in the long run, I really do think that even though the investment is, is significant in the first place, down the road it is a money saver. Because I have, in many people, before implants were readily available, many people I've had to replace bridges two or three different times because of problems. And it wasn't until, in fact, one patient, you know, I said, we could do this again in another five or six years, or you can go and get some dental implants, and now we don't have to. So two things happen. Number one, we haven't had to replace any of his teeth because, you know, a bridge is basically building a larger house on a smaller foundation. And with a dental implant, we have the proper size foundation for the proper size house, for the number of teeth that we have. Um, if we have a four-tooth bridge, we're putting four teeth on the foundation of only two roofs. But if we put two dental implants in there, now we have four teeth on four roofs. That is the way God intended it to be. So we don't have the collapse. We don't have the need to replace four more teeth if something were to happen down the line. So I think it is absolutely the best way to go. Now you ask, okay, when would we not do a bridge? Um, or when would we not do an implant and we would do a bridge? I have a dental implant in my mouth. I think that it's the best way to go. That's why I chose to have a dental implant. But when might we do that? If a patient is in a certain situation where they already need to have crowns on these other teeth, they already know that their financial circumstances may change down the road, then we may choose short term to do a bridge in an area um, where we, we're planning long term to eventually go to a dental implant. But for right now, we're replacing the teeth, we're making his mouth stable, we're getting him back to health and function, knowing this is, might not be the, the best way to go, but for now, it's the best. We all have to live real life. We all it's, have to be in, in this place where we are, and we have to make hard right. decisions sometimes. That would be the place where we might choose a bridge over it. Got it. So, Dr. Chon, so basically, it, it's, um, it is still a functional way to go for a bridge. Um, 
But only, it, it could be most likely, you know, when those teeth next uh, start collapsing, all of a sudden you need to redo it all. Now, if they already collapsed and you need to put already a crown and bridge, uh, a crown on it anyway, then that may yeah. be a, a yeah. time you say, okay, we, we need to, they already gone anyway, we need to do what we need to do and build it up and make, yeah. make put a crown on it, then it may be. Now, let me ask you, in terms of lo longevity, you see, before you said that you lose bones, so when you have two or three teeth missing, you're going to start losing bones in that area, and also, I have, uh, tell me whether there's some truth to that, so you, let's say you have three units, three teeth or four teeth, um, they're kind of welded together for all purpose. They're probably not welded together, yes. but I'm just uh, yes. u using that word. Uh, uh, now, yes. you can't really floss in between, so you need to use those, uh, whatever they call those things which you go yes. underneath. Now, I am yes. somewhat, a sloppy, uh, somewhat a sloppy guy. Like at night, when I go, with, you know, my wife and me go to the bathroom the same time, and we come out there literally an hour and a half later. We talk and talk and talk, but here's the thing. I shower, I shave, and I brush my teeth while she is only brushing. So you get the point, right? Um, I'm not quite as dedicated as she is. Would a person like me having one of those bridges and probably a few times a week say, nah, not today. Today I just, yeah. I'm done. That's another real benefit, Helmet, of having dental implants is because you can floss your dental implants just like you floss your teeth. You don't need any special little tool. That little tool is called a bridge threader, by the way, and okay. it does work very good, and we're glad we have them for those situations. But in the situation where a person has um, a dental implant to replace that tooth, and they, do, they can floss their teeth normally, just like they do every other tooth. So it doesn't take... Um, you know, double or triple the amount of time because you have to find the little bridge later and then you have to put it in the little space and, and anybody who, who is listening to this that, that has done that or tried to do that before, they understand what I'm talking about. But with a dental, um, a dental implant and having a crown put it, I have a dental implant with a crown on top of it and I floss it every day just like I floss every other one of my teeth. So it's not, um, it's not a problem with as with the bridge fetter um, that so, some people have experience. So, Good point. So the so, periodontal health, so the gum health, is actually much easier to take care of. And your hygienist will, will give you an A-plus more often if you're flossing your dental implant than if you're not flossing with the bridge threader, your, your bridge. Yeah, well, never, so. never, never mind the dental hygiene. It's just, just, uh, just uh, uh, deliver the kidney, the heart, the bloodstream, the diabetes thing, the immune system. Uh, you brought as, up a big point. As we have, yep. as we have mentioned in other, other videos, um, you know, uh, it will help you. Uh, Dr. Johns, uh, again, uh, appreciate your informative, um, uh, you know, output here. Very wonderful. Thank you.